Hey guys, so in my last video I asked you all if you'd be interested in hearing my take on a healthy lifestyle plan. I mentioned that I recently lost a little bit of weight and I've really adapted this new, like like I said, healthy lifestyle plan um, into my everyday life and I have really had success with it whereas in the past I've tried other diets and workout plans that I've never, they just haven't worked for me. Um, and so I asked if you guys would be interested in hearing what I had to say about that and I did get some comments as well as some inbox messages saying that you know, you've been struggling with this recently, um, especially now now that the um, rush of the new year is over, you need some motivation to stick with it. And I think this plan that I'm following might be helpful to some of you out there as it was also another YouTuber who inspired me and motivated me to keep going with this. So just as an FYI, this video will be a little bit long and rambly. I have a lot of bases to cover. I'm going to break it up into sections. That way, if for some reason you're in a hurry and you don't want to watch all the sections right now, um, you can skip and fast forward as needed. I will put the approximate time when each new section starts down below in the info bar. So I hope that will be helpful for you guys. The first section is going to be my background, my body type, and what I've done in the past and what has not has and has not worked for me, um, as well as what motivated me to make this change in my life. I think that is so important when you're listening to someone talk about weight loss to know what their body type is and what works for them and what doesn't because every body type is so different and reacts so differently to different forms of eating and working out. So I think that's really important for me to talk about just a little bit. The next section will be the plan that I'm actually following. I don't really like to call it a plan so much because I will tell you right now it's just common sense. It's not something that I feel like I'm constantly thinking about which is something that I needed. I'm too busy to be counting calories and weighing my food. Um, so yeah, it's basically just common sense, and I'll get more into it in section two. Section three will be nutrition, section four will be workouts, and then section five will just kind of be a conclusion slash wrap up slash motivation to keep you going. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video, and I'm going to go ahead and get started with section one. Okay, so let's go into my background a little bit. I grew up as a very active kid, to be honest with you. I cannot remember a time when I was little when I was not running around with friends, playing tag, hide and go seek, capture the flag, or if I didn't have any friends available that day, I was just riding my bike all over this community, um, playground hopping and just running around by myself and exploring creatures in the woods and things like that. So I was a very active kid. I think I was one of those last generations where parents were comfortable just saying, go out and play and then come back in when you're hungry. And then, you know, since I was three years old, I also took up ballet and dancing and all that type of stuff. Um, and then I did that up until I was in middle school. In middle school, my mom transferred to a new section of town, so obviously we moved and she enrolled me into a more intensive and disciplined dance school. My sister and I both went to this dance school. And like, people went on to be professional ballet dancers for professional companies at this school. So it was like seriously hardcore. I was at the studio five, six days a week, just hours at a time doing just classes and upkeep and then um, performance rehearsals. And then during the weekends, we were sometimes running around Around doing performances in the community so it was pretty pretty intensive so I was in really really good shape up through high school um, I think my biggest downfall were my eating habits because we were so busy and my mom was a single mom with two kids at this crazy dance school we did eat some fast food because we really had no other choices um, we just had zero time to sit down and eat together as a family most days so we did rely sometimes on fast food but when my mom had the time and when she was able to we did eat healthy, like we weren't allowed to have sugary cereals growing up, we weren't really allowed to have a whole lot of desserts in the house. When we did get dessert in the house, when we would get my mom in a good mood at the grocery store, we could convince her to buy like Little Debbie's or fruit roll-ups or something. It was kind of a big deal in our house. So. Um, I wasn't really allowed to have a lot of stuff growing up, and I do remember that very distinctively. To this day, I don't really eat a lot of like sugary cereals. Like I eat Cheerios, and while those have some sugars, and then they're not quite as bad for you as like you know Fruit Loops or Cocoa Puffs or anything like that. Even though I ate fast food growing up, I don't eat it now. That is not an issue for me giving up fast food at all. I haven't eaten at a fast food place, and I mean fast food, I mean like McDonald's or Wendy's or Burger King. I haven't eaten at one of those places for, I can't even remember the last time, it's been years. So that is not an issue for me. I think we mostly ate there out of convenience, not because we loved it so much. Um, as far as my body type, I will say that when I am in good shape, I am an athletically built person. Um, I am not slim and slender at all, and I never was, which I think is so strange because ballet especially trains your muscles to kind of grow inwards and elongate, whereas mine just grow out and they are really thick looking so even when I'm in my best shape I don't ever feel like I'm super thin. Throughout college I didn't really have a hard time 
um, with weight. I never gained the freshman 15. I think it helped that I had mono one semester. But I mean, even so, when I quit dancing, I knew that I had to supplement my physical fitness routine with something. So I picked up running. I was never like super into it, but I did try to just do it as much as I could because I knew that I had to do something. I couldn't just go from 60 miles per hour to zero. So I did pick up running a little bit in college, but my eating habits declined quickly in college. When I graduated college, I think that was the biggest culture shock for me. I went from kind of like a loose schedule with a few classes here and there and extracurriculars here and there to working nine to five, sometimes longer every day, having a boss to report to, just being exhausted. And when you just graduate college, you also don't have a ton of money. I couldn't afford to join a fancy gym. I couldn't afford a lot of equipment at home. I just lost like all of my motivation to work out. I couldn't find the time to do it, and I got really frustrated. I tried all kinds of different diets. I tried the zone at one point, and I'm the type of person that like I just go into things full force, and that's what I would do, and I would just have such high expectations of myself that I would just get to a point where I was so frustrated that I would give up. Um, I tried um, dramatically reducing calories. I tried different food combinations to give myself more energy, to work out more, and it would just all get to a point where I'd do it for one or two weeks straight at full force, and then I would give up. Like, just my workout routines, I would go into kickboxing just crazy, crazy hard, and then my muscles would be so sore, and I was so physically exhausted that I would just give up and stop doing it. So I knew that I really needed something that I could gradually work up to I needed a diet plan that I didn't have to think about. That's one thing with me too is I'm a busy person. I don't like cooking, especially even for two people. I don't like cooking for two people. I don't want to have a ton of dishes left over every night that I have to worry about before I go to bed. I need something simple. So that's kind of where I was um, a couple years ago. And even when we moved to Chicago, I had a serious health issue as well. I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Um, if any of you guys are ever wondering what this little tiny scar is on my neck, it's from when I had my thyroid removed. And once I had that taken care of, I had to go through a series of treatments where I was not allowed to physically exert myself for several months. So it took me a really long time to recover from that. And after that, I just never was able to get myself back into a healthy plan at all. I just didn't really care what I was eating so much. I didn't really care um, if I worked out or not. I would try here and there and just very unsuccessful at it. So it got to a point, um, especially after I became a wedding planner, where I'm you know diving into meals that are given to me from vendors at weddings and I don't really have a say in what they are so much which is fine um, but like and then you know brides are offering you cakes and cupcakes and things like that I just started noticing myself increasing in weight I never got to a point where I was overweight on the BMI index whenever I went to the doctor I made sure that I wasn't but I was slowly creeping up there and obesity runs in my family and I was just not having that it just kind of was a wake-up call for me the last time I went to the doctor and I was weighed and I saw what my BMI index was and I was like that's not good I need to do something if anything, just to stay healthy. Heart disease also runs in my family and that's a huge concern for me. So there I was. I didn't know what to do. I knew that most diet plans would not work for me because I don't like measuring. I don't like counting. To me, eating should not be that complicated. So I finally found a plan that worked for me and let's go into section two and I'll tell you what it's all about. Section two, what I'm actually doing to stay a healthy person. So this plan, like I said, is common sense. I was watching my YouTube videos one day and I have this one beauty person that I follow and I will link her down below. Her name is Julia. She's actually in Switzerland. And she recently lost, I think, 33 pounds and she did a video on how she did it. So I just kind of clicked on it because it popped up in my subscriptions inbox and I was just watching it. And something just resonated with me with her. She was just saying how she cut out sugars, she cut out carbs from her diet, she ate a lot more like fresh fruits and vegetables, she worked out regularly. Guess what? She lost weight and it wasn't that difficult because it was all just common sense. She didn't count calories, she didn't measure out her food, she ate smaller portions and eventually she lost the weight. So basically, that's what I do. I just I started going to the grocery store and picking out fresh fruits and vegetables. I stay out of the middle part of the grocery store. I know that a lot of people know this, but it's actually a, like a mind over matter thing. You have to just convince yourself that this is the way to go. You really can't shop for you know carb heavy carb heavy snacks. Those 100 calorie packs are no good because they are loaded with all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, which your body does not know how to process. So it kind of stores those things somewhere else in your system, and it could 
would add to weight gain over time. So I started eating a lot more vegetables for dinner, which I think was the hardest part for me because I don't, like I said, I don't like to cook and I didn't really know what to do with these things. But luckily, Julia, the girl that I was watching, is also really good with food. So I started watching a lot of her recipe type videos and I picked up a lot of tips and suggestions from her on easy dinners. So most of the recipes that I make now for dinner are hers. So I'm very, very grateful to her and I really appreciate her video. It just resonated and clicked with me and I was like, this is what I need to do. Um, the only thing that I do kind of watch out for are carbs. You have to cut your carb intake if you want to lose weight. Um, I am a carb person. I love carbs. I'll get more into this in my nutrition section, but it was really hard for me to cut that out. It is a mind over matter thing, like I said, and I just have to convince myself that this is going to be worth it. And I was able to power through and I did get through it. The hardest part is going to be the first two or three weeks. I think that is the hurdle that you kind of have to get over. Once you can do it for two or three weeks, your body gets adjusted to it and it becomes a lot easier. So I think that was my problem in the past. I would give up after one or two weeks and that's not enough time for your body to adjust. So um, that is pretty much what I've been doing. I've been eating just a lot more fresh things, cooking a lot more at home, using really healthy ingredients, cutting out carbs, watching my portion sizes, and it's been really successful for me. So let's go ahead and jump into section three, which is nutrition. Okay guys, nutrition. This is probably the most important part about losing weight. I have read a lot about this from just like nutritionists and physical fitness experts. And a lot of people say that 70 to 80% of your weight loss is going to come from what you actually put into your body. And you have to know that is so true. <laughs> if you eat a lot of bad foods and you still work out a lot, chances are you're not working out enough to burn off the extra calories you need for your body to go into debt with calories to actually burn off the extra fat and weight. So that's really, really important to keep in mind. So this was the biggest thing that I knew going into this plan that I would struggle with because every morning I would have a bowl of cereal. Sometimes like I would fill up my bowl and then I'd have leftover milk when I was done with my first batch and I'd pour in more cereal. So I had a lot of carbs in the morning. So I knew that was something that I would have have to change. I'm a huge comfort food person. I love pizza. I love french fries. I love macaroni and cheese. Things like that are really bad for you and carb heavy and you're putting a lot of um, unbleached flour and processed sugars in your system which really adds to weight gain in the future. So I knew that I'd have to cut those out dramatically. So when I wake up in the morning I knew that I had to start my day off with a really substantial healthy breakfast and I knew that it had to be fast and it had to be easy because in the morning food is my coffee. I can't function until I have food. Usually people wake up in the morning and they have have coffee and shower, I wake up in the morning and I say I need breakfast to get going. So I now make two scrambled eggs with a little bit of skim milk kind of whisked in there and I make a piece of whole grain toast. Not whole wheat, but whole grain. Lots of hearty grains because they keep you fuller longer. I have a piece of whole grain toast and then I also have this juice from Trader Joe's which is called plant food and it has all different kinds of green plants in it but it actually tastes really good. So I have about one serving of that which is about eight ounces and I feel like the plant juice juice really makes the most difference and really is what holds me over. Like the other day I ran out of it and I just had water instead and I was doing my workout later that day and I felt like I had far less energy because I will usually work out a couple hours after breakfast just because that's what my schedule allows. So um, that really gets me off to a good start. For the first few weeks I was finding it was not holding me over. I was starving an hour later um, and I think that was just because I was eating a lot less calories and it just took me a while for my body to get used to it. So just keep that in mind that you just kind of have to stick with with it. Um, I know it sounds bad to say like, oh my gosh, if you're starving, you should eat something. But really for me, I knew it was just my stomach adjusting to what I was used to eating versus what I am eating now. I had to severely limit the calorie intake that I was having. So, um, one thing that I fall short on is lunch, and I will tell you guys I have no good suggestions for you. I will say for the most part that I eat lunch at home because I do work from home, and for some reason, I don't know why, but I seem to always forget to eat lunch. I will just kind of go into my kitchen and just kind of scramble around some random like fruits and vegetables. So I'll have like a banana, um, and I'll have carrots, and like a yogurt or something. It's not substantial. You guys should probably have a more substantial lunch, especially if you're out and about working at an office and using up more energy commuting back and forth. Sometimes I forget to eat like a good lunch and I don't know why. Um, I'm not recommending it. That's definitely a bad thing to do, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm struggling to find something that is healthy that I kind of remember to eat and put together and that's fast and easy. So right now I'm just kind of in my kitchen scrambling around for fruits and vegetables and I'll throw in a yogurt and maybe even a piece of cheese here and there. So um, 
I then won't eat again till dinner. I'm not really a huge snack person during the day. I'm more of a snacker at night, but if you do need a snack during the day, I do really like uh, celery and peanut butter. I used to do that when I worked a lot. That uh, one's one thing. Snacking is really one thing during the day that I've never really had an issue with. I was totally totally okay eating healthy snacks throughout the day. Moving into dinner, I wouldn't snack in between lunch and dinner. Um, this was one thing that I also really struggled with. I started following a lot of Julia's recipes. She makes an amazing asparagus salad, which I love. It's like basically some grilled asparagus chopped up with some tomatoes and onion and then some mozzarella cheese and some vinaigrette and olive oil. And I just kind of mix that all together. It's so fast and easy to make. It's relatively inexpensive to buy the ingredients from the um, the grocery store and I have that with another piece of whole grain bread so that's basically my carbs for the day. She also makes a really delicious bean salad which I don't make as often just because it's a little bit more um, labor intensive and requires a little bit more ingredients so I will only make that when I have like a lot of time like maybe on a weekend or something. So go check her out if you are interested. She's actually one of those people that can just go into a grocery store and pick up a bunch of things and whip something up whereas I need like a recipe with instruction. Um, I have started making just like lots of vegetable stir fries. I'll just go to the grocery store and buy like a bunch of random vegetables and just put them all together in a pan and season them and eat them and I think that's really filling and delicious. Um, but yeah, that's mostly what I eat now for nutrition and then as far as a snacking later at night, this is when I really get into trouble because I love snacking and watching TV at nighttime. That's just kind of like where I get into trouble. So I usually now will have a piece of fruit in the summer months when, when grapes were in season, I would have a bowl of grapes. I think grapes are a really great snack if you're used to snacking at night because they're individually sized. So it kind of feels like you're putting like chips or something into your mouth because you're, it's like that oral fixation thing. So I found that grapes were a really great way to get me started in through the night and then I'd have a small piece of cheese on top of that. So I'd go to bed. The first few weeks I was feeling hungry. I'm not going to lie. And I know that again, that sounds bad to go to bed hungry, but I knew that it was my body adjusting because I would snack so so heavily at night and that's really bad and I knew that it was just my body adjusting to the fact that I wasn't going to be feeding myself as much at night so that's basically what I do now in the past I had really struggled with processed foods a couple years ago I was highly addicted to those like lean cuisines and smart ones and that's just bad you just you cannot eat those those things are just nasty and full of chemicals and gross ingredients and just telling you right now that I feel very passionately about processed foods now. I really believe in eating fresh things from the produce section at your grocery store. Um, just because, like I said, a lot of those chemicals go into your body and your body does not really know what to do with them. I mean, could you just eat all those things because you're only intaking a certain amount of calories every day? Yes, but you're not doing your body any favors. In order to work out successfully, you really should feed your body properly with the right nutrients and things like that. So I think that's just really important to keep in mind as well. I'm not a believer in those 100 calorie packs. I would much rather you guys go out and buy a fresh piece of fruit and have a piece of cheese or something or peanut butter or almonds or something like that. I know that that doesn't sounds super appealing right now if you're used to eating more sugary snacks but in the long run it's just so much better for you and I have noticed an energy increase when I eat fresher ingredients and fresher fruits and vegetables and things like that so that's basically what I've been eating it doesn't sound like a lot every day but just keep in mind again that I eat most of my food at night which I know is not good I really should be snacking more throughout the day but that's just kind of how I am and luckily it still has worked out for me as far as cheating with my nutrition it does happen I when I first started this plan and I was feeling so gross and so tired and just really, really ready to make this change in my life that I went for two weeks straight without any bad food. I didn't let myself go out to eat. Um, I didn't have any sugars or any sweet things. After two weeks, I did treat myself to one of my favorite meals, which is a veggie burger and french fries. And then for dessert, I had half of a cookie and that just felt so amazing. But now that I'm kind of down a little bit as far as weight goes and I'm feeling a lot healthier and better about myself, I do let myself have you know, a, like a less healthy meal once in a while, like maybe once or twice a week. So one of my favorite like semi splurges for nutrition is I do a lot of my shopping at Trader Joe's. I'd probably say like half of our shopping is at Trader Joe's. So if you don't have a Trader Joe's around you, I'm really sorry. But if you do, I highly recommend this puff pastry margarita pizza. It is so good. It's under 500 calories. Um, it doesn't really have a ton of carbs in it because the crust isn't like super fat and super thick and it is a small size, but it's not one of those like really teeny tiny little individual pizzas. Like it's still a really good size and this is so satisfying and so delicious. And it is from Trader Joe's, which means there's not a lot of preservatives and chemicals in it. It's just still really fresh frozen ingredients. So I really do like this pizza from Trader Joe's. I probably have this about once a week as my semi splurge. And then like once a week, my husband and I will still go out to eat and I'll just kind of let myself 
really splurge on something. As far as diets and stuff, I think that Weight Watchers is definitely the most popular and I think it's the one that works the most. But here's the thing with Weight Watchers that I, I don't like. They don't really focus on healthy eating and that's a big thing with me. You know, Weight Watchers has a lot of those frozen prepackaged foods which are not good for you. Like I said before, I used to rely heavily on those frozen dinners and the smart ones are the Weight Watchers brand. They still have a lot of chemicals in those things that are so bad for you. They allow you to have a lot of prepackaged processed foods like that and I don't think that's a really good way to lose weight. Obviously, if you have a ton of weight to lose and Weight Watchers is working for you, I say any motivation you have to at least get down to a healthy weight is good. And then once you want to start fine tuning your weight, you can go ahead and then start cutting out all the bad foods and replacing them with healthy, nutritious, like leafy greens and fresh, fru fresh fruits and vegetables. So um, I think Weight Watchers is good if you have a lot of weight to lose, but at the same time, I don't think that they're really teaching you healthy eating habits as far as you know, nutrients and things like that. I always say count nutrients, not calories. That's what I have to say about nutrition. So let's go ahead to the next section, which is exercise. Okay guys, section four, which is exercise and working out. So in nutrition, I did say that healthy eating is about 70 to 80% of how you're going to lose your weight. You do have to put good foods into your body in order to actually lose the weight and become a healthier person. But for me personally, I think that working out and exercising is just as important. Yes, you can dramatically reduce your caloric intake and lose weight without working out, but for me, I don't think that's as healthy. And I think when you do work out, it really enhances your nutrition and makes you lose weight and become a healthier person a lot faster. So for me, I don't work out at a gym. I work out at home for free. In the warmer months, I will go running every once in a while. I'm not a huge runner. I don't love doing it. Every once in a while, my husband and I will go running together and I'll be into it for like a week and then I'll be like, okay, I'm over that. Um, for me, I find that circuit training really, really works and keeps me motivated and keeps me interested. So I really enjoy the Jillian Michaels DVDs. I have three of them. I think this is all of the cardio circuit training DVDs that she has. So I have No More Trouble Zones, which is something that I don't really use very often. I think I've only actually used it like three or four times. I do really like it. I just prefer doing a lot of cardio and this is really focusing on strength training. So like on days when I'm really not feeling cardio but I really wanna force myself to work out, I will use that DVD and I really enjoy it. It's just I don't really use it quite as often. Then I have the Banished Fat Boost Metabolism, which is just like a 45 minute intensive cardio workout. This is the one that I'm actually going to go do right after I finish recording this video. Um, at first, when Josh and I, my husband, started using this about a year ago, we could not even get through the first three circuits. Like, that was how hard this was. The moves look really easy. They're just like jumping jacks and basic like lifting and jumping up and down. And they look like they would be really simple and easy to do, but they're not. So this... This DVD right here kind of showed me that you can get an amazing workout without fancy equipment at your home for free. And I have a very small living space and I'm able to do this workout. So I really, really love that one. Um, and then I also have her famous one, which is the 30 day shred. I think a lot of brides use this. I see this circulating a lot of like wedding message boards about getting into shape for your wedding. Um, I do really like this one as well. I am up to level three now. I started at level one got up to level two and I'm now at level three and I can easily get through level three. So I'm kind of looking for like a new workout that really focuses on strength as well as cardio. So I think I might go to like some Biggest Loser DVDs or something, but um, this is a really great one. I love that it's 20 minute workout. So like if I'm in a hurry or if I worked a lot that day, I just, I don't really have time to do like the long 45 minute circuit. I will go ahead and I'll do like a 20 minute Jillian workout. So I love, love, love those DVDs. They are hard, but you just have to force yourself to do it. There's really no other way of getting around it. Working out, I think, is really about mind over matter. And I love Jillian's way of explaining things in her DVD. She just motivates me to want to keep going. Um, she says that you have to just force your body to feel the pain and adapt to a harder workout routine or nothing is going to change. And that is just so true. I do not work out every day. There are definitely days where even I plan to work out and I just am like, you know what? No, I need a day off. But I really do force myself to do it at least three times a week. I think that's probably a really good way of looking at it. If I can do it at least three times a week, you'll likely want to do it four or five times a week. So I know when I first started, 
after I got over that initial hurdle where my muscles were extremely sore, when I was starting to really feel strong again, I wanted to do these DVDs five times a week. So um, I cannot recommend these enough. I absolutely love them. So that's basically all I do for exercising and working out. I found it really easy to incorporate into my everyday life, and I'm really happy with the results. Hey guys, <laughs> so I just finished my long Jillian Michaels cardio workout. It's about 45 minutes and I just feel so good right now. So I just wanted to jump on here and just say it was really hard for me today for some reason. Maybe it's a Monday, it's a little bit more dreary out than it has been lately. There's no sun. It's a little bit colder. I just really did not want to work out today, but I knew that I had to because tomorrow I know that I can't. I have a pretty busy schedule tomorrow. So I forced myself to do it today. At first I was like, maybe I should just do a short 20 minute workout. But I ended up forcing myself through the 45 minute one and I'm so happy I did. I feel so good right now. I'm all sweaty. <laughs> I've sweated out all my toxins for the day. Um, but yeah, I really love that workout. I also wanted to say that, I didn't mention this before in the video, but um, strength training is really, really important. There is one circuit in this video that focuses on strength training, and I'm so glad that I've given myself the chance to really build, build up my muscle mass again. I was always so afraid of it because I didn't want to look super bulky because I tend to be a little bit bulky anyway. Um, <clears throat> My arm is so tired right now that I'm having trouble holding the camera out in front of me. Um, but muscle training is so important because the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn during rest time. So I find that even though I work out just a little bit when I'm eating unhealthy, I don't gain quite as much weight because my muscle mass is still kind of burning some calories for me during rest periods. So really, really important. I haven't found myself to be extra bulky or anything like that after strength training. So um, I really love that part of my workout too. So that's also super important. So anyway, if I can work out and I don't feel like it, I know that you guys can too. So this is just your daily dose of motivation right here. Okay, last section guys, just conclusions, um, some tips to keep you motivated and how I actually maintain this lifestyle. So I think the most important thing to remember is if you're looking at becoming a healthier person and just really trying to make this change in your life but you're getting frustrated um, because you keep hearing like, oh you gotta keep at it for two or three weeks and you won't really see results for, like until a month or something like that, that can be really discouraging. But the way that I kept looking at it was this. Your life is going to be very long. Like most people are going to live, you know, until they're 60, 70, 80 years old. A month or two out of that entire lifespan is not a lot of time. So, you know, while it might seem like it's going to be a struggle to get through a month of just getting started with this new healthy lifestyle plan, it really isn't that bad. I think while you're going through it, it seems worse than it actually is, but once you get over that hurdle, you are already feeling so much better and great about yourself that you're just gonna be motivated to keep going. So just keep that in mind when you're you know, continuing with this plan and you're hitting some rough points and you're like, I don't know if I wanna continue, it's just not really working for me. It takes time and you have to let your body adjust and you have to give your body that amount of time to see the results. So um, that's kind of how I looked at it. It's just one month of my life. Can I give one month of my life to becoming a better person? And you really can. I know that if I can do it, you can do it because I really was like, the laziest person on the face of the earth um, before I started this. So um, just keep that in mind and that really worked for me to keep me motivated. Um, I started this plan on November 1st, 2011, so I haven't really been at it that long, but I already know it's something that I'm going to be able to continue for every single day of the rest of my life. The month of December was hard because it was um, Christmas and holiday seasons, so I was going to holiday parties and cooking lots of things and baking lots of cookies, um, but I found at that point that I was so motivated to keep going that I would just allow myself a few treats here and there during the month of December and I would still work out and that really helped out a lot. Just like the upkeep and just kind of maintaining, just kind of, it's just a balance game. You know, I can have one cookie but I'm going to work out today or something like that. So um, I was not depriving myself at all during the holidays and then once we got to New York for our long vacation with our family, I just went crazy. I will say that when I went to New York, I did bring workout clothes and I brought, um, I think, yeah, I brought the shred with me. So I brought my weights to do it as well as my mat. Um, and I did work out while I was home. I didn't do it every day, but I did do it a few times. And I think that helped me to not gain weight. I don't think I really gained a ton of weight during the holidays this year like I usually do. So that was really great. I think January has been my biggest struggle month just because... You know, all the holidays were over and it was just dark and cold and dreary. Granted, it hasn't been as bad of a winter as it normally is in Chicago, but 
winter in January is still just no fun. So, um, you know, I did struggle. I was not working out as often as I probably should have, like maybe maximum three times a week. So I will say that I did have a setback. And then, then we went to Mexico and I did not work out at all the whole week we were in Mexico. I ate and drank a lot. So I definitely probably gained a pound or two when we were in Mexico. When we got back, I was again sad to be back. I really missed our vacation together. Um, and it kind of took me a while to kind of get back into the swing of things, but I did. It just It's a slow process. Like one day I'll start with doing like a short 20 minute circuit and I will go back to eating semi well again. And then the next day I'll improve on that. And then the next day I'll improve on that until before you know it, I'm back on track again like I am today. So um, that's really all I have to say about healthy living. Just eat really, really fresh, healthy ingredients. Stay out of the middle of the grocery store. Just don't bring things into your house that you'll be tempted to eat. If you really, really want to treat yourself, you'll have enough motivation to go out, go to the store, buy one thing to snack on and then come home and you'll be satisfied. Just keep up with your workout routine it really does make you feel more energized and better about yourself and then you'll start to notice definition in your muscles and toning and things like that and you'll feel so much better about yourself in the summer months when you're showing a little bit more skin um, and just keep on track just keep remembering that you have a very very long life ahead of you and you should be healthy not only on the outside but on the inside too you want to live a very long happy life to be with your husband or your family or if you ever have kids someday you're gonna to want to set a good example for your kids so I think that's just all really important and something that I now feel very very strongly about so uh, I hope that you guys at least found one or two tips that were useful to you I hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments or want to share your weight loss story with anyone else please let me know in the comments below or send me a message I would love to hear it so um, until then I will talk to you guys later bye